Hey everybody, this is Burke, and today we're going to be going over how to do some debugging with Kindle UI or just debugging web applications using the browser tools. And the first thing you'll notice if on my screen is that I've got Chrome up. And so tip number one is to get some good dev tools. And IE's got some decent dev tools, but they're really not on par with Chrome or Firefox. So even if you're not going to target Chrome or Firefox as, as the browser that you're going to support, I would still highly recommend doing your development in Chrome or Firefox, or at least having one of those installations handy um, in case you get hung up. So that's what we'll be looking at today. So I've got a very simple application. Let's go ahead and take a look at that here. And it's it's very simple. It's just an HTML page. It includes Kindo UI here, the CSS references at the top, and it includes the JavaScript here, jQuery, and then a custom JavaScript file that I wrote that's going to take this div right here and turn it into a Kindo UI grid using just a very small bit of JavaScript, very simple. Let me pull it up here and show it to you. There it is. So I'm just going to select that div, set the data source on the columns, and list out the data on the page. So nothing fancy, very basic. Now, if we run this, what you'll notice is that this application fails miserably. It displays the header here but none of the content is there. There's no indication that there was an error. There's no, there's nothing to tell us exactly what went wrong or that even something did go wrong, just so we have a blank page. So the, the first thing that I want you to do, if you're going to be using Chrome especially, is to install a little utility called the JavaScript Errors Notifier for Chrome. And what this does is it tells you in a very unobtrusive manner that you do have some JavaScript error in your page and it puts this little X up in the corner of the browser window. Just I want to add this to Chrome and dismiss that scary little disclaimer saying it has access to all our data here and once we do that um, waiting for this thing to install here we can come back and refresh our page and when we refresh you'll notice that we now have this little red X in the corner and that red X is telling us that yo, you have JavaScript errors on this page, and so we know that there's definitely some underlying problems. So let's go ahead and open up the dev tools. So to do that, you have really two ways to, to get there. You can hit the menu, and then you can go to tools, and then developer tools, or you can do it the way I like to do it, which is use the control shift I keyboard shortcut to open up the developer tools. So control shift I, that opened up the developer tools, and I've got the font increased dramatically here. Um, they're not normally this big. But let's take a look at the tabs that we have and just go over them very briefly. The first one is the elements tab and that of course shows you your page and the structure. And our page is very simple but you can see as I highlight over these items they they are um, they're highlighted up here so the header in this case and then over here we have any of the style rules that are matched and there's no styles applied to this element but if there were you would see those here um, and then we can additionally add styles and tweak them so we could we could set its color to green and it updates in real time or even better green yellow Ugh. All right, so these are the elements of the page. The next tab is the resources tab, and this is where you would find any resources that are being um, pulled down from the server and or resources that you have in the browser. This is an especially useful tab if you're using local storage or WebSQL or IndexedDB. You're dealing with data stores in the browser, which are otherwise obscured from you. You can interact with those here. Um, this tab's invaluable for that. The next tab that we have is the network tab, and this is where I find myself spending most of my time, and I'll do a refresh, and and you'll see that all of the requests that we're making are listed here in this tab. And if we were to click on one, we can get more information. So I can see what was requested, uh, the response, what came back here. So a lot of really good information here. The next one is the sources tab, and this is your debugger, really, in the in the Chrome developer tools. You can set breakpoints, you can do conditional breakpoints, you can have watches, you can step through your code, you can evaluate at runtime. So very useful stuff here. You can of course see the app.js file, but you can also see any scripts that you have in your actual page itself, which we don't have any inline scripts here. If we did, they would show up there. You can also debug remote code, like the, this, the CDN that we have, um, but these are minified files. and so so they're not going to be that easy for us to, to debug, even though you can see we've got an error here that we're going to have to work through. 
The next one is the timeline. And the timeline profiles and audits tab are, are kind of for performance and, and speed tweaking and things like that. So I'm not going to talk about those today. The last one is the console. And there's two ways to get there. You can click console here. Or you can just click this little button right here, which is helpful if you say you're on the elements tab and you want to hit the console and it just slides up. And the console is where you'll find a lot of the errors get shelled out. Um, and it's also a place where we can interact with the page and execute arbitrary code. Um, for instance, I could do an alert, um, say like this, and it will just pop that up to the page. Um, and we could also interact with the page. So I can do dollar sign, and dollar sign is jQuery. Um, and then I could select this uh, header that I have here. Um, we'll just select all the H1 tags and then uh, fade them out like this. And then I can fade it back in. So lots of fun with jQuery. And you can interact with your page in this way. So let's take a look at our errors and start squashing these bugs. The first one that we have is this, this get uh, style sheet and it's a 403 forbidden. So I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna take me over to the, let me hide the console here. It takes me over to the network tab and it's got this, this item highlighted and, and this, is what, oops, this is what we are looking at here. And it's got no response. And if I look at the header, it's telling me that it did get a 403 back, um, but this is the CDN, so I'm pretty sure I do have access. So what I'm gonna do is, I want to just uh, get this item and open this in uh, a, a new tab here. Uh, and you can see that when I do that, I, I do get an access denied. So I'm hitting this URL directly, and I, I'm pretty sure access isn't denied. So I'm just going to make sure this is well formed. Um, so this looks right to me. I know that this is the current version. That's right. Okay, so that's, that's supposed to be styles, and it's missing an E. So let me add an E on there. And there we go. So let me fix that silly mistake. Just go ahead and stop this. I really didn't need to do that. I could just fix all these things. Since we're not uh, working in the, the compiled code, the JavaScript and the CSS is not compiled. And so we can just make those changes on the fly without actually having to stop and, and restart. So I'll save that. And then let's head back to the browser. And we should have cleared up at least that error for now. So let's see here, get to our console. All right, so that error is gone, and now we're on to some different ones. So the next one is that jQuery is not defined. Well, it's telling me that it's occurring here. So if I click on this, this will take me to the spot in the minified Kindo code. And I don't know about you, but I can't debug this. But what I do know is that if it's telling me that jQuery is not defined, then I need to know before Kindle UI loads that jQuery is for sure defined. So what I'm going to do is just check my page. And if I look at my script references, I, I know that it's important that scripts are in the right order. So I see that, that here that I'm actually loading Kendo UI before I'm loading jQuery. And that's a problem because when Kendo UI is going to, when, it, when it's loaded, it's going to try to initialize itself and it's going to be looking for jQuery and jQuery is not there. So it's very important when you're using jQuery and jQuery plugins that jQuery is the first thing. It needs to be there or things are not going to work very well. So we'll make that change and save, uh, head back to our app here, and we should have at least cleared up that error. The jQuery should now be defined. And we're error free, but we still don't have any data. So we have no errors, but we have no data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure that the albums endpoint that I specified here, let me pull up this uh, app JS file. Um, I just want to make sure that this API albums is actually being read. So let me come back over to the network. And what I can do is just refresh. Okay, so it's not being called at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the elements tab. And I want to see if I have a grid in my page, just period. Um, and the way I can do that is if I look at this div, if this had been turned into a grid, it would have a bunch of um, K dash styles on it. It would have been modified by Kindo UI and I can see that it hasn't been, it's still just a div. So what that tells me is that none of my code is actually being applied to this div. So I'm betting that my jQuery selector is probably wrong. So I'm gonna copy this and then head over to the console and paste it in and execute it. 
And what I get back is an, is an empty array, which is jQuery's way of saying, I didn't find anything on the page that matched that selector. And I can see that it's because I'm selecting albums, which is the ID of the div, so it needs to have a hash in front of it, because that's how you select an element by ID. If I make that change, now I'm getting back the albums div. So we can fix that in the app.js file here. So let's go ahead and put this in. And now we should actually be getting a grid on our page. Okay, so there's the grid, but there's still no data in it. All right. So let's check the, the network tab and see if we're making a request for data. Hide the console. And we'll just refresh here. And I'm looking through all of my requests, and I don't see that there's been a request made to the API slash albums endpoint. Um, I'm going to have a look at my sources here. And I've got the data source defined. I have a transport. I have a read and a schema set. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select this grid and I, and I just want to see what its, what its properties are. So I'm going to select this albums element and I'm just going to say data and then kindo grid like this. And this gets me the kindo grid reference off of this, this item. And I can, I can say far grid so I can store this in a variable so I can reuse this without having to redo the selector again. Uh, and, and it gives me undefined. So what this is telling me is that uh, if I take a look at grid here, oh, actually, sorry, undefined is what was returned, but it, that's because it was it was stored in grid. So if I look at the grid, I can see that here is the. Let's make this a bit taller. Here is here's the the grid object as it's been returned, and these are the different things that are on the grid, and. What I want to do is I want to look at the data source. So I can say uh, grid, sorry, not there. Down here, we'll just say grid dot data source, data source. Okay, so there's no data source. Let me take a look at that again because I swear I saw a data source in there. Uh, there it is. Ah, so what's the difference here? Okay, and this one, the S is capitalized, and this one, it's not. So looking at my code, looks like I didn't capitalize my S. That's a small but very important difference um, in, in making a grid that works versus a grid that doesn't work. So let's correct that and see what that gets us. Let me come back and fix this, this capital S. And let's see where we are now. I'm betting we're actually going to be getting some data. Let's see here. I'm going to move this down. So we still have no data. Let's check in the network tab. But we're at least we're now making a request to the server to get some data back. Um, and in the response, there it is. So this makes me think that I have something wrong with either my data source configuration or the columns configuration. I'm going to pull this up again. Easier to look at. So I'm pretty sure this is right. It's being read in, but obviously either the scheme is not being applied or the columns is, is not correct, the definition of the columns. And I can I think the columns definition is correct. I can look back at the data here. You can see title is there. Let me scroll over. Artist is there. Um, genre is there. That all looks right. So let's head over to the docs and actually check out the schema. So my docs at kindoui.com slash API slash framework slash data source. So I'm going to filter this a little bit um, because I just want the schema. And let's just take a look at their example. So they have a data source of the transport and then a schema. And I think I know what it is already, but I'm going to compare with what they've got with what I've got. So this is what theirs looks like and mine looks like this. So transport. So in theirs, schema is on the same level as transport. And in mine, I've got schema inside the transport. So let's move the schema outside the same level as the transport so that we'll have a well-formed data source. There we go. And I'm betting now we will have a functioning Kindle UI grid. Look at that. There we go. So that's been a very quick and uh, basic introduction to 
debugging Kindle UI or web applications using the Chrome developer tools. Hopefully it's been very helpful for you um, and we could do some more videos on advanced debugging techniques in Chrome and there's a ton of stuff out there on the web especially from the uh, Chrome developer relations team on some uh, very advanced things in the Chrome developer tools. Additionally there's Firefox and uh, Firebug which is a very popular uh, set of browser tools as well. So that's all for this time and I'll see you later.